Welcome to another episode of Reef Keeping. What's up guys? It's Noah here, your Reef Geek, with another topic for today. And if you've known from my last videos, I've been experiencing pH fluctuations, you know, all the way down at night and all the way up during the morning hours till the night hours when my lights are turning off. So we're gonna talk about that, a bit of what I'm experiencing and a bit of what I'm doing to eradicate the problem. Now, if you look at my tank, uh, some of my corals are being stressed out because of the fluctuations in pH. Uh, they're not my nicer ones, they're just the bird nests and stuff like that. So thankfully I have my nicer colonies and let's keep it that way and hopefully we can solve this as soon as possible. But what's happening is that um, they get stressed out with the fluctuations. Thankfully the fishes aren't as stressed out easily. They're pretty happy, they're eating normal. And you know, a couple corals are like the SPS are the only ones that are experiencing that problem. So let's pull out my notes for this video. Here you go. Uh, let's talk about what pH is, okay? So pH is just a measurement of how acidic or alkaline your water is. Natural pH, uh, neutral pH is at 7.0. Anything, I believe, uh, below, yep, neutral is acidic, considered acidic, meaning that anything below 7.0. 5.0 something like that is acidic anything above is alkaline okay now I've, I've researched around to see what the normal range is for uh, pH and it seems to be that if you're keeping a reef tank the recommended pH is actually below uh, is between 8.0 and 8.4 now I keep uh, this little handy dandy reference uh, sticker here and it says the uh, recommended amount is 7.8 to 8.5 and I think that's because uh, fish only doesn't require such a high pH level but ideally you want to keep it below 8.0 and 8.4 now before this was 8.7 um, and I'll tell you how I solved this issue here because I was just getting excessive excessively high pH that was causing some stress to my corals and killing it um, so I was trying to stop that all right, some more information over time. Uh, your salt water will tend to have a lower pH since uh, acidics are added to the aquarium, okay? The acids result in a excessive carbon dioxide production uh, and uh, which causes it to have a lack of sufficient gas exchange within the tank. Okay, other lower pH um, causes can be um, neurotic acid buildup from biological filtration and production of organic acids and metabolic <laughs> metabolic waste productions. That's just way too much for me. But basically, your skimmer, if it's not performing right, can cause a low pH issue. Okay. And now airflow is also a big thing. That's why you can see um, sometimes it's not getting enough pH. Uh, enough. Uh, <laughs> I got this pH word in my head. Enough air exchange, and that's why it can cause. Um, that issue too. Now I know if you have low pH, I've had that issue before, simply all you need to do is crack open your window and your pH will rise automatically or else you can put some baking soda in there but be very careful about that and do it in very very little small you know, experiment first, very small amounts to see the effect in your tank. Now being that I have a high pH, um, let's see this is uh, okay if the pH in your tank becomes too high try adding vinegar uh, or carbon dioxide add one milliliter of distilled uh, vinegar per gallon tank uh, will reduce 0.3 units of pH so this is what I used uh, to lower it today I went out to Co food and just grab or any grocery store and just grab distilled vinegar and I measured it and I poured it in there and I got my pH to lower down. Now another thing that you can do is, uh, let's see here. Uh, bottle soda, okay. So bottled soda water can be added, six milliliter of soda per gallon of water and this will help reduce by 0.3 units in pH. So if, you know, for some reason you have, you know, you don't have vinegar laying around, this would be the best method. I would get uh, some, bottle soda because then you could drink it I know you can't drink vinegar and so if you you know happen to solve your pH issue then at least you you know don't have to leave a whole thing of vinegar around and you can you know or if you have 
soda, you can actually start drinking it. Um, so it serves a double purpose there. Again, uh, right now, I, you know, I'm surprised that I'm having this issue because I haven't had this issue before. And actually, yesterday I did some testing with my water, and um, for some reason, my, my, um, what is it? My alkalinity was at I think 14 dKH, which is which is really excessively high. So what I did was I cut it, I cut off my dosing like. 20 milliliters less than what it's used to daily dosing so hopefully you know that will slowly bring it down and then um, another tip would be to do water changes I think is what I heard let me check um, all right the best method to ensure pH stability is to perform routine water changes and if you know lately I did that three week period where I did not do a water change and uh, it worked out for me until I did a water change and I think that you know, maybe shock some of the coral and cause some of this issue to come up. But hopefully, that's enough information for you. If you have any advice for me that you'd like to share or want to share to other people, uh, make sure to mention it below. Uh, right now, like I said, at night I would get my pH at 8.4 and then in the morning or when these lights turn on it would be 8.7. So the fluctuation is just way too much for me. I would like to keep it between 0.2. Um, you know in the fluctuations and nothing more because I, I don't want to stress all my corals and so um, we're gonna try to at least eradicate this issue and resolve it and so we don't have this issue anymore I'll keep you guys updated again uh, updated on this situation again if you guys have any solutions any recommendations be sure to mention it below if you have any questions feel free to ask and as always thanks for watching remember to share subscribe and let me know if there's any products or anything you guys would like to uh, me to talk about. I'd be more than happy to look into it. Again, always guys, happy reefing and always be sure to share your knowledge so you all know, you know, at least I noticed that when I, I joined the community in, in saltwater reefing that it's hard to find, you know, people who want to talk about it. So I figured whatever I'm learning, I'm going to share to you guys. So it's, just make sure to uh, share your knowledge so we all get around to you know solving this together and that you know we each don't go through the same problems anyways have a good week see you guys later happy reef geeking see ya